Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the Hobbywing X Schroeder G2 Micro Combo. So this is this is actually requested quite often actually. More, more than anything I've seen get requested before. So we finally got it in full review and this is going to be just an overview video uh, before we go ahead and start the testing because I have a lot of things lined up for testing. So right now I'm just going to do a connection setup and just a little unboxing and taking a look at the boards here. So let's see what it comes with. Obviously you get the 4-in-1 ESC. We do get the F4 flight controller. It's really nice, very light actually. Look at this, crazy with SD card expansion. So let's put this to the side. So we get these two, I think these are stickers. Um, yeah, they, they seem like stickers. So we get two stickers. We get an extra order 45 amp 4-in-1 and a flight controller sticker. So that's really nice. And we get some pretty massive capacitors. We'll take a look at that. So they give us a pre-made XT60 connector, which is really nice. This is 12 gauge, so it's pretty massive, uh, which is very good because this stack takes up to a 6S. So that's uh, really nice to see here. And they do provide us with most of the wires that we will need here. And we'll take a look at them a little bit. And these are, uh, I think, silicone or partially silicone. I don't know what this would be called. You get a nice, big, fat instruction manual, which I highly doubt you'll possibly need, but it's really nice to have. So let's take a look at this goodie bag here. So we get two low ESR capacitors. At first, I thought one would be like a 35 volt and one would be a 25 volt. So it would be like for a 6S setup and a, and a, a 4S setup, but that was incorrect. And what we see here is we get two capacitors. We get a 35 volt 560 microfarad uh, Rubicon low ESR capacitor. And we also get a 35 volt 1000 microfarad uh, Rubicon low ESR capacitor. So these are really nice. And uh, this kind of says something about the layout that it could be possibly noisy to provide two of these, or it could be just a common nice little courtesy. And as you can tell here, they provide these little tiny heat shrinks. And this is really good because this is even cut to length. So you don't risk damaging it. As you can tell, you could shrink that there. So you don't risk um, any sort of short circuit from the capacitor leads here, which is uh, really nice and very thoughtful. I mean, if you're paying a premium price, and as you can tell here, they provide us with four M3 long screws. Now these might be long for a lot of frames, but the idea here is why do they provide you with a metal screw? Well, the idea here is so that you won't have this, you won't have the standoffs break. For example, if you got in a crash and then the XC60 wire got caught, uh, this will keep this in, in, keep both of them intact here, as you can tell. It's right there, so that'll keep it fairly secure. And as you can tell, both of the flight controller and the ESC are soft mounted, which is really nice. And they do provide you with these really tiny, tiny uh, spacers, which is also very good because now it'll take a lot less of a stack height, which is really good to see here. And they even provide you with a little nut. This is pretty crazy. I've never seen this. Now, obviously, this will add quite a, possibly quite a bit of extra weight than usual to your quadcopter. But um, it's really nice that they did that here. So now let's take a look at the board. So let me put these guys to the side here. Let's take a look at the boards here and see how we would set this guy up. All right, so let's start with the ESC here. Now this is a 45 amp ESC that's rated up to 6S, which is really nice to see. And as you can tell, it does have soft mounting, which is also very good to see because these two are gonna be connected together and they are both soft mounted. Now, the way it's connected to the flight controller is obviously through some sort of connector and they do provide the connector, especially if you get the stack, which is also very good to see since you're paying a premium price. Now, as you can tell here, it does have some glue. So this will keep this intact and into place. Uh, which is also screaming, I am a premium component, and I was very well thought out. So another cool feature of this flight of this ESC here. Now the filtration seems, I would consider somewhat average, but we won't know until we start testing it. But the filtration seems, I, I would have expected a little bit more, but you can't expect so much because they do have two voltage regulators on board. They have a 10 volt regulator on board as well as a 5 volt regulator on board. Now, what the, you could use that for your VTX, which is really nice to see because I don't think the flight controller has a voltage regulator on board currently. Uh, we'll see that in a little bit once we jump into this guy. So let's take a look at the layout here. So if you wanted to connect this guy, let's just say you didn't get the correct flight controller here and you got this wire to connect it to whatever flight controller you're going to connect it to. Uh, let's take a look at the wiring diagram. So here we would have motor four. So that would go to your motor four. This is three and this is two and this is one. So the last four from the right here are motors one, two, three, and four. And after we finish that, we get a five volt. So this would be five volt if you wanted to power up a flight control that takes five volt. And then we also get the ground next to it. It's, it's, it's really 
a shame that they didn't really color code these kind of correctly but um yeah that's that's i guess you're gonna have to live with that but they do provide you a pretty detailed instruction manual here so you can kind of know what you're doing so that's really nice as well um after five volt you get a pad called crt or a wire called crt and this would have to be run to your flight controller's uh, current sensing capabilities if it does provide that because this will be coming, this is the current reading currently from the shunt resistor here because it does not have ESC telemetry which is also pretty sad. I wish they would have done this as an ESC telemetry pad but I don't think they were able to fit a shunt resistor for each corner but, and they wanted to get at least current reading on this whole setup so I think that's why they went ahead and did that. And uh, what do we have next? Then we're going to have battery. So this would be the battery voltage. And then these last two are 10, 10 volt and ground. So yeah, these two here, I don't know why I would consider this would be like battery voltage and ground, but this is 10 volt and ground here. So that's all set and done. Now looking at the board, the board looks really nice. It does have the same kind of design style as Airbot. Airbot likes to be really sharp and really square. Um, as you can tell, you have those. The pads look pretty big and they do have holes here and the holes do help with some sort of uh, binding so that, you know, the, um, the solder would go through and just hold a little bit better. So that's really nice. And they also do have it here as well. And they have these two holes here, as you can tell in the ESC, which is also very well thought out because that would be where you would connect your capacitor. And I'd highly recommend you connect the capacitor. The testing will be upcoming on maybe the next video and one of the next two videos we're going to be testing it without a capacitor with one of the capacitors the 560 i think and the thousand that they provide you with and we'll see how well it's going to perform hopefully we're going to also push it on a 6s and see what we can do with it so the esc looks really nice and really well made it does seem like it's conformal coded on the bottom here a lot of people are saying this could be the best esc ever I mean, if you can probably add that 35 volt, 1000 microfarad low ESR capacitor, it, it possibly could be, but time will tell here. So let's go ahead and move on to the flight controller here. Okay, now the flight controller seems really light and uh, really basic. There isn't really much going on for it here. I do see a little bit of filtration possibly for the OSD area here. So you don't get any noise into the OSD, which gives you lines or the OSD uh, breakup or blackout or whatever you want to call it. So let's take a look at this. Now, first of all, when you grab this and you're actually holding your hand, you might be like, oh my God, where's the OSD? There's no video out, video in, blah, 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 blah. And the OSD chip is right there. But when you first receive it, it'll have actually a sticker over it, which you, I, I personally thought it didn't have an OSD for some reason. This sticker was on it right here until I removed it and I noticed it because it was stating it had OSD. So let's just start from the bottom here. So let's just say we wanted to connect a S bus uh, receiver here. So how would we go about doing this? Well, what we have here is we have five volt. We would connect the five volt there, ground here, and S bus right here. This is for FR Sky inverted S bus. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and connect, for example, I bus, you would put again five volt. Oh no, sorry, ground five volt, an RX three, and on serial or UART three in the ports tab on Betafly, enable serial RX for UART three here. And we also have some other. RX and TX is here. We also have an RSSI reading, which is really nice to have and uh, super awesome. Now, if you're going to be using a spectrum receiver and it takes 3.3 volts, this is the same concept. You say ground 3.3 volts, RX3, same kind of like a, uh, what is it called? I think spectrum is uninverted S bus. So you'd connect it like an I bus. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this side here. Now here we have a five volt and a ground, and then we also have another five ground and a five volt. And then here, I believe this is the 10 volt. Yeah, we have 10 volt pad right there and then we have the LED signal. So if you, this is where you would connect your LED signal. And uh, for example, if you want to connect LED, you would go, uh, you know, ground five volt LED signal. If you want to connect your buzzer, it's right there. BB minus BB positive. All right. So how would we connect our camera? Well, the camera, I wish they had pads for the camera, but they don't. So it's just going to give you a little bit more uh, solder. You're going to have to solder quite a bit more and you're going to need some pretty thin heat shrink. And I think that's why they provided so much small heat shrink in the package. So when you connect your wires to these, you, you can go ahead and do that. Now, again, I wish these were color coded again, but th they're not. And it's, uh, it's really, I, I really don't like that. I really do wish they were color coded here, but that's fine. So if we wanted to connect our camera, we would have to go to the first wire here. So this would be video in. And then the next wire they have is not five volt and ground for your camera. This would be video out. So this would be going to your VTX right here. This has to go to your VTX right there. And then the third wire down here is the, what do we have? We have the 10 volt and ground. 
So if you wanted to connect your VTX, you would connect these three together right here. You would go first one would be the video out and then 10 volt and then ground. So this would power up, this would complete your VTX, those three wires. Now you're left with the first and the last two wires. And the last two wires here are the UART 6RX and TX, which you probably won't need, but you might need if you're using some kind of uh, smart audio or something for your VTX to control it, then you probably use one of these. So in the theoretically, what you want to do with your camera now is obviously give it the yellow wire to this first one here and come here and get five volt and ground from this side. So it's kind of well thought out, but I would have liked to see more because they have so much real estate on this. Uh, but I don't know how, how much of a um, space they have from the traces left over. Um, it seems like a very light board. They went for uh, it being as light as possible. I wish they also trimmed some of these off here uh, for the price that you're paying. But overall, it looks pretty good. I can't say much until we start testing it. And... Um, it's it's pretty nice. It does have an SD card expansion, like I mentioned, OSD, and the uh, it does have an MPU 6000 gyro. Oh no no sorry, it doesn't have an MPU 6000 gyro. Uh, this thing has an ICM gyro, which is a sensitive gyro. So this thing, now I understand why they provide you with those two capacitors. So 6S on ICM gyro. If this thing can handle a 6S on ICM gyro, uh, this might be a beast. But Till then, uh, currently, this looks like a pretty good setup. Um, I can't say much currently until we actually finish or do the testing here. And um, yeah, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is the first look at the Hobbywing uh, X Rotor Micro Combo G2, I think. Yeah, that's what it's called. And um, the testing will be upcoming in a later video. And just wait till then. And I will see you next time, guys. So peace out.